we will start today renal system um <clears throat> what about the other uh, subjects i mean to say that uh, in physiology in anatomy pathology uh, microbiology and the biochemistry uh, which system is going on uh, renal system or still you are in uh, uh, git and the hepatic biliary system please answer any one of you please answer okay monica are you there yes sir yes sir okay so which system is going on in our uh, uh, anatomy renal anatomy uh, and um, patho and uh, i think uh, in all the subject you know i just started okay. but in subject is still we are in jit okay and, and anatomy anatomy and the physiology physiology also physiology okay. also did okay. that, that that's good that's good so anatomy and the physiology if anatomy and the physiology renal system is started then it will be easy for us uh, to start the renal system in pharmacology also okay so today we will discuss on the topic so we will also start the renal system today so i think uh, okay we will discuss about uh, that later so uh so we will discuss today topic uh, the topic name is the drug use for the urinary tract infection a very simple topic it's a very simple topic nothing in detail about the drug nothing in detail about the drug because we all know that the if urinary tract infection is there we need to give the antibiotic and we have already discussed about the antibiotic a lot in first year so that is the reason we will not deal uh, with the uh, like uh, mechanism of action any mechanism of action any adverse effects any this and that of the particular drug in this topic uh, broadly broadly the treatment of the uh, urinary tract infection and the name of the drug name of the, the pharmacological and the non pharmacological measures for the treatment of the urinary tract infection okay so what is a urinary tract infection first of all the urinary tract infections so urinary tract infections in simple language in simple language infection of the urinary, urinary tract infection of the urinary tract by microorganisms infection of the urinary tract by microorganisms okay when i will say the microorganisms so you have to remember we have discussed about the microorganisms microorganisms are the microbes microbes so when we say the microbes or the microorganisms they are the bacteria they are the virus they are the fungi they are the protozoa or they may be the parasites they may be the parasites okay okay parasites are other thing bacteria fungi virus or protozoa they are the micro microbes okay microorganisms or the microbes and the antimicrobial antibiotic antiviral antibiotic antiviral anti antifungal and the uh, <coughs> antiprotozoal they are the okay so drugs for urinary tract infection so infection of the urinary tract by the microorganisms is called the urinary tract infection it could be the it could be the bacterial or the viral or maybe the fungal but most commonly they are the bacteria most commonly there are the uh, bacterial infection so in simple language that is urinary tract infection okay <coughs> let's start okay now this is the anatomy simple anatomy i think you know about it this is the anatomy of the urinary tract infection this is the anatomy of the urinary tract infection okay so what is there in the urinary tract infection okay two kidneys are there we know about that the right kidney and the left kidney right kidney and the left kidney two kidneys are there okay so formation of the urine will be there within the kidney the formation of the urine will be there within the kidney now from there there will be the tube like structure two tube like structure now one is from this right kidney one from the left kidney and one from the right kidney two tube like structures are there that is called the ureter that is called the ureter so there are the two ureters there are the two ureters now that ureter will be open will be open into a urinary bag that is called the urinary bladder that is called the urinary bladder okay this is the opening of the ureter this is the opening of the right ureter that is the opening of the left ureter of okay, urinary bladder and from the urinary bladder the urine from the urine will flow will form the formation of the urine will be in the kidney from there the urine will flow bilaterally from kidney to the ureter into the urinary bladder and in urinary bladder there will be the uh, the collection of the urine will be there and further there will be the further what will happen further uh, this uh, ureter ureter uh ureter through the ureter okay the uh, urine will be excreted outside the outside the uh, body so this is the urinary tract infection simple urinary tract infection two kidney two kidney two ureter one urinary bladder and and one ureter and in male again in male uh prostate gland prostate gland is present okay prostate gland is present behind the ureter behind the prostate gland is present just beneath the or behind the ureter so this is called the this is called the urinary tract infection it's a simple sim i think you know about that i think you know about that you you must have uh, read about that in your uh, uh, before also so this is the urinary tract 
so unit this is the unary tract this is the unary tract if infection occurs anywhere if the vesicle the bacterial infection if infection occurs anywhere anywhere in this part that is called the unary tract infection that is called the unary tract so basically they are the lower unary tract and the upper unary tract okay so what is lower unary tract so lower part of the body so ureter and the urinary bladder ureter and the urinary bladder they are called the lower unary bladder un lower unary tract where the uh, sorry urethra and the bladder urethra and the bladder urinary bladder they are called the lower urinary tract while the upper urinary tract are the ureter as well as the kidney or basically the kidney basically the kidney they are the upper urinary tract okay so whenever there will be the infection lower urinary tract infection and the upper urinary tract infection so urethritis urethritis is called the infection of the urethra by the bacteria there is a lower urinary tract infection cystitis cystitis is the is the infection of the bladder that is called the lower urinary tract infection if there is infection of the kidney that is called the pyelonephritis that is called the pyelonephritis that is called the upper urinary tract infection that is called the upper urinary tract infection so and the generally upper urinary tract infection they are more severe than the lower urinary tract infection that means the pyelonephritis pyelonephritis is more severe than the cystitis or the urethritis now introduction introduction of the urinary tract infection introduction of the urinary tract infection okay introduction infection of the urinary tract is called the urinary tract infection that the upper urinary tract infection lower urinary tract infection that we have already discussed about that what are the causative agent for the urinary tract infection causative agent for the urinary tract infection the most common cause for the urinary tract infection the most common cause for the urinary tract infection are the bacterial infection bacterial infection and the most common bacteria are the gram negative bacteria gram negative bacteria most of the urinary tract infection they are caused by the gram negative bacteria and among the gram negative bacteria 80% approximately 80% of the urinary tract infection they are caused by the e coli e coli you have to remember this word e coli is the most common gram negative bacilli bacteria uh, that causes the 80% cases of the uh, urinary tract infection other other gram negative bacilli that also causes the urinary tract infection are the proteus mirabilis Klebsiella pneumonia, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. While approximately five percent of the gram-positive cocci, they also cause the urinary tract infection. They are enterococci, streptococci, and the staphylococci. This is just the microbiology. So we have to remember here only one thing: most of the urinary tract infection they are caused by the gram-negative bacteria, and among the gram-negative bacteria, eighty percent of urinary tract infection they are caused by the E. coli. Okay, they are caused by the E. coli. Risk factor. Causative agents are the bacterial infection. Causative agent are the bacteria. So, what are the risk factors that predispose the? What are the risk factors that that predispose the that predispose the uh, ur urinary tract infection? Actually, they are not the causative factors. They are the risk factor that this predispose that predispose the uh, urinary tract infection. The urinary tract infection. Number one is the female gender. Number one is the female gender. Urinary tract infection is most common among the female gender, comparing to the male. The reason behind that is the anatomical variant of the urethra. Anatomical variant of the urethra, that is the size of the urethra. I mean to say the length of the urethra. So in 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 male, the length of the urethra is about uh, is uh, uh, is, is uh, larger than the female. I think 25 millimeter in uh, male. Uh, I am confused. 25 or 10 millimeter. Uh, uh, I but uh, comparatively the. Uh, in female the uh, the length of the urethra is a 4 mm while in male i think it is a 10 mm or 25 mm i am confused but uh, the comparing to the male and the female the, the length of the urethra in female is shorter comparing to the male only the 4 mm only the 4 mm in the female so what will happen because of the short urethra short urethra because of the short urethra the access of the bacteria the access of the bacteria from the external environment to the urinary tract is easy Okay, the access of the bacterial infection, the access of the bacteria, or the access of the bacterial infection, or the microorganism from the external environment to the urinary tract is easy because the short urethra, because of the short urethra, only four millimeter, only four millimeter. While the in the male, the urethra size is longer, so access is a bit uh, uh, less easy, less easy, less easy uh, uh, than the uh, female. Okay, that is the reason the female in female the um, urinary tract infection is the most common. Second is the sexually transmitted disease like the gonorrhea. Sexually, if the female or the male is the female, commonly the female because the sexually transmitted disease again, again they are the common among the female comparing to the male. So that is also the reason the uh, it is common among the female. Okay, sexually transmitted disease like the uh, uh, gonorrhea. Okay, and the infection of the cervix, infection of the sometimes the fallopian tube or the uterus. Okay, so that that infection, that bacteria may be transmitted from the uh, this uh, uh, this uh, from that. Uh, uh, this cervix from the uh, from the vagina of the female, from the uh, uterus, from the fallopian tubes of the uh, fallopian tubes of the uh, female, 
towards the urinary tract towards the urinary tract that is also the reason the sexually transmitted disease that causes the uh, they, they are the risk factor for the treatment or for the so they are the risk factor for the uh, urinary tract infection okay diabetes third is the diabetes patient with the diabetes patient with the diabetes uh, because in diabetes the immune defense mechanism is reduced immune defense mechanism is reduced so that is the reason so the capacity to fight the immune defense mechanism is reduced so the capacity to fight against the infection is also reduced so that is also the reason that in diabetes during the diabetes uh, in patient with the diabetes recurrent urinary tract infection is common recurrent urinary tract infection is common okay in dwelling urinary catheter in dwelling urinary catheter that means in dwelling urinary catheter that means what so what is the use of the urinary catheter the catheter urinary catheter they are used during the retention of the urine when there is a problem with the acute retention of the urine so when there is a acute retention of the urine the urinary catheter is placed urinary catheter is inserted inserted uh, in human body okay so but if it is kept for the longer duration like 5 days 7 days 10 days and the 14 days so what will happen the, the infection may be transmitted from the um, external environment through urinary you know, urinary tract uh, through this uh, urinary catheter towards the urinary tract towards the urinary tract of the human body that's called indwelling urinary, um, urinary, urinary catheter okay renal stone other is the renal stone okay so what is the renal stone so whenever there is the uh, renal stone it's a, it's a it's a, it's a uh, stone that is present in the kidney so whenever the renal stone is present like uh, it is present in the if it is present in uh, kidney if it is present in the ureter if it is present in the urethra or the if, if it is present in the uh, uh, urinary bladder so what the level because of the stone the flow of the urine is reduced the flow of the urine is reduced when there is a flow of the urine is reduced So what will happen? There will be the there will be the stasis of the urine will be there. There will be the accumulation of the urine will be there. So when the accumulation of the urine, the stasis of the urine will be there. And the, when the stasis of the urine will be there, the stasis of the urine will create the environment for the growth of the bacteria. For the growth of the bacteria. So that is the reason. Then the stone they also predisposes to the urinary tract infection. Benign prostate hypertrophy same because the benign in, in the male that is common among the male. What is the benign prostate hypertrophy? That is the enlargement of the prostate gland after 50 years. among the male among the whale so what will happen that they are they are located behind the urethra they are located behind the urethra so when this uh, urethra when so this uh, prostate is enlarged gradually they 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 they, they, they blocks the they, they, they blocks the urethra they they blocks the urethra they they, they um, what we said they uh, blocks the urethra so because when they blocks the urethra partially or the fully stasis of the urine will be there when there is stasis of the urine it, that will uh, create the uh, environment uh, favorable for the uh, growth of the bacteria that causes the urinary bladder urinary tract infection and the other is the vesico ureteric reflux vesico ureteric reflux that is the that is the reflux of the urine that is a disease in which there is a reflux of the urine from the urinary bladder towards the ureter in the retrograde fashion in the retrograde fashion so these are the risk factors for the urinary tract infection okay just remember them just remember them i have explained about everything in detail but just remember that so there are the few risk factor for the urinary tract infection as a female because of the anatomical variant is the short ureter second is the sexually transmitted disease diabetes because of the immune defense mechanism indwelling urinary catheter okay renal stone benign prostate hypertrophy and the vesico ureteric reflux vesico ureteric classification of the urinary tract infection so what are the classification of the urinary tract infection so on the basis of site okay lower urinary tract infection and the upper urinary tract infection i have already discussed the earlier so lower urinary tract infection urethritis urethra prostatitis prostate and the cystitis urinary bladder if there is infection of the urethra infection of the prostate gland or the infection of the urinary bladder they are called the lower urinary tract infection and the upper urinary tract infection they are the complicated type of the urinary tract infection pyelonephritis infection of the kidney pyelonephritis and sometimes there is the renal uh, there is the intrarenal abscess formation of the perinephric abscess formation abscess means the collection of the pus in the cavity okay so abscess intrarenal renal abscess and the perinephric abscess okay so this is the classification of the uti lower uti cystitis urethritis and the prostatitis and the upper uti pyelonephritis intrarenal abscess and the perinephric abscess perinephric abscess these are the urinary tract infection i think i have already discussed about that earlier no okay so that's a very simple no need to discuss uh, uh, in detail about this uh, should i continue any confusion yes sir okay now again on the basis of the on the basis of the uh, severity on the basis of the severity there are the uncomplicated and the complicated urinary tract infection uncomplicated and the complicated urinary tract infection so what do we mean by the uncomplicated that means infection of the urinary tract infection is infection of the urine, urinary tract but the condition is that the urinary tract structurally and the functionally normal that the urinary tract is structurally and the functionally normal but bacterial infection 
only there, but bacterial infection only there. That is called the uncomplicated urinary tract infection. Like cystitis for the shorter duration. Cystitis for the shorter duration, one to five days. Okay, that is called the uncomplicated urinary tract infection. It's, I will repeat it again. Uncomplicated urinary tract infection. That means the the uh, urinary tract infection is structurally and the functionally normal. Functionally normal, but only the bacterial infection is there. But only the bacterial infection is there. That is the all the uncomplicated urinary tract infection. Like the cystitis for the shorter duration, cystitis for the shorter duration, uh, that is the one to five days. That is the example of the uncomplicated urinary tract infection. Okay, I think should continue. Now the complicated urinary tract infection, complicated urinary tract infection. So what is the complicated urinary tract infection? Complicated urinary tract infection. That is the infection of the structurally and the functionally abnormal urinary tract. Just opposite. Urinary tract is structurally and the functionally abnormal. Okay, abnormal, and the infection of the bacteria will be there. Like renal stone. If renal stone is present or the benign prostate hypertrophy is present, so because of that reason, what will happen? The structurally and the functionally, the urinary tract is abnormal, and that leads to the urinary tract infection. That is called the complicated urinary tract infection. Again, if the cystitis that is prolonged for the longer duration, that is an example of the uh, complicated urinary tract infection. Complicated urinary tract infection. Okay. I think everything is simple there. Everything is written clearly there, so no need to explain in detail. No, so you, you, if you will read it, then it will be easy for you to understand. Okay, should I continue? So, what should be the goal for the treatment of the urinary tract infection? Goals for the treatment of the urinary tract infection. So, goals. So, number one goal will be symptomatic relief by altering the pH of the urine. So, what is the? We will discuss about that in later. So, one of the goals should be the pH of the urine should be altered. pH of the urine should be altered. The reason for that is. Basically, we know that the E. coli is the E. coli. They are the most common. They are the most common cause for the urinary tract infection. The property of the one of the property of the E. coli is they they grow or they survive better. They grow or they survive better in pH between six point five to seven. Six point five to seven. They, they they grow between six point five to seven. So when you will increase the pH above the seven, so that will create the environment. That will create the Uh, that will create the alkaline environment. That will create the alkaline environment. So, what will have the growth of the the growth of the E. coli will be reduced. The growth of the E. coli will be reduced. So, that is the reason for altering the for altering the pH of the urine for the symptomatic relief. Okay, we will discuss about that in the uh, coming slides. Okay, so what is symptomatic relief for by altering the pH of the urine by altering the pH of the urine. Okay, second is the antibiotic. Therapy should be given for the treatment of the infection. Antibiotic therapy should be given for the treatment of the infection. Okay. Again, sometimes in case of the diabetes, prevention and the treatment of the reoccurrence. Prevention and the treatment of the reoccurrence of the urinary tract infection. And the, again, if it is because of the underlying cause, because infection, urinary tract infection because of the underlying cause like the renal stone, diabetes, or the benign prostate hypertrophy, the first priority should be the identification and the treatment of the underlying causes like. If it is because of the diabetes, blood sugar level should be controlled. If the blood sugar level will not be controlled, recurrent uh, uh, urinary tract infection will be persistently happen. That is the reason. Okay. Second, the obstructive reason. If there is a renal stone is there, the renal stone should be removed. Okay. And the second is the catheterization. If it is because of the catheterization, the catheterization should be removed or the new catheterized should be inserted or the placed. Okay. So these are called the goals for the treatment of the urinary tract infection. Number one is the symptomatic relief by altering the pH of the urine. Second, the antibiotic therapy should be given for the treatment of the infection, prevention and the treatment of the recurrence, and the identification, the treatment of the predisposing factor. Identification and the and the treatment of the predisposing factors. Okay, like diabetes, treatment of the diabetes, treatment of the renal stone, and the removal of the infected catheters. These are the uh, goals for the treatment of the urinary tract infection. Okay, now classification. So we have already discussed about the drug in first year about the antibiotic. Only two drugs are given. Number one, one drug is the antibiotic, and the two second drug is the drug that causes the alkalinization, alkali alkalizers, uh, urinary alkalizers. Okay. So number one is the bacteriostatic classification. Number one, uh, two two types of the antibiotics are given. Number one is the bacteriostatic antibiotic. They are the so when I will say the bacteriostatic, you know about that. Okay. Sulfonamides, tetracycline, and the nitrofurantoin. Sulfonamides, tetracycline, and the Nitrofurantoin. These are the bacteriostatic drugs. These are the bacteriostatic drugs. Okay, and bactericidal drug. Bactericidal drug. Okay, so bactericidal drugs. They are the co-trimoxazole. Co-trimoxazole means trimethorphan plus sulfo sulfo methoxazole, sulfa methoxazole, and the trimethorphan. Okay, amino glycosides. Amino glycosides. They are active against the gram-negative uh, gram-negative bacteria, gram-negative bacilli. Drugs are the gentamicin and the 
amikacin dendamycin and the amikacin and the fluoroquinolones okay fluoroquinolones norfloxacin and the ciprofloxacin they are also active against the gram negative bacteria cephalosporins third generation cephalosporins okay uh, septaxin and the septizidim so uh, septaxin and the septizidim and the uh, uh, penicillin what are the penicillin it's the extended spectrum penicillin like the ampicillin carbenicillin and the piperacillin this is just name of the drug this is the name of the drug Cotrimoxazole, aminoglycoside, chloroquinolone, cephalosporin, and the uh, excellent spectrum, penicillin, excellent spectrum, penicillin. Okay. <clears throat> I think no need to uh, explain in detail about it. You know about that uh, uh, very well. Okay. Now, uh, treatment of the lower inner tract infection. Okay. Treatment of the possible lower inner tract infection. Okay. When the treatment of the lower inner tract infection, when they are acute, and the uncomplicated lower inner tract infection when they are the acute and the uncomplicated lower inner tract infection remember two or three drugs okay remember two or three drugs okay so uh, most common drug i think among this is the ciprofloxacin okay if you remember the ciprofloxacin at least one or two drugs that will be okay for you nitro uh, ciprofloxacin uh, 250 to 500 mg bd for three days 250 to 500 mg bd for three days okay nitrofurantoin 100 mg bd for seven days nitrofurantoin 100 mg bd for seven days okay Trimethorphine 100 mg BD for three days, and the ampicillin 250 to 500 mg QID for three days, and the cotrimoxazole two tablet BD for three days. I just remember two or three drugs. I think the best, best I think easy to remember will be the uh, ciprofloxacin or the ampicillin or the nitrofurantoin. Anyone you can. But the only the thing is that because they are uncomplicated, the duration of treatment will be for the short, for the shorter shorter duration of treatment will be three days. Most of them are the three days, and the only the nitrofurantoin for the seven days. Nitrofurantoin for the seven days. Okay, when the lower inner tract infection, they are the chronic persistent. In, when there is a chronic persistent infection of the lower inner tract, in, your lower inner tract is there. All the above regimen should be given for the seven to fourteen days. All the above regimen should be given for the seven to fourteen. Only the duration of treatment will be increased when there is a chronic persistent infection of the lower urinary tract. Lower urinary tract. Treatment of the upper urinary tract infection. Same drugs, same drugs. Only the difference is duration of treatment. Okay, if there is acute pyelonephritis, if there is acute pyelonephritis. Ciprofloxacin 500 mg BD for 7 to 14 days. Okay. Ciprofloxacin with or without gentamicin for 7 to 14 days. Cold primoxazole 2 tablet BD for 7 to 14 days. Or ampicillin 500 mg QID for 7 to 14 days. For acute pyelonephritis of the, they are the upper neutral infection. This is a chronic pyelonephritis. All the above regime, but up to 28 days or the more. Up to 28 days or the more. Only the thing is, if there's a low neural tract infection, the drugs are the same. Duration of treatment is only three to acute in acute condition, three days to seven days. If the chronic persistent infection of the low neural tract infection will be there, seven to fourteen days will be there. If the acute pyelonephritis, upper neural tract infection will be there. Same drug will be given for the seven to fourteen days. If the chronic pyelonephritis is there, same drug will be given for twenty-eight days or more. For twenty-eight days or more. This is the treatment of the upper neural tract infection. Symptomatic treatment, symptomatic treatment of the UTI. Okay, what is the symptomatic treatment of the? So we drug drug treatment. We all symptomatic treatment is the number with the alteration of the pH of the urine. Alteration of the pH of the urine. Okay, what is the growth of the E. coli? Growth of the E. coli. Growth of the E. coli uh, occurs better when the pH of the urine is six to seven. When the pH of the urine is six to seven, and it is inhibited. It is inhibited. When the or the growth of the E. coli will be inhibited when the pH will be less, it will, will be below 5.5 or above the 7.5. Will be five, either below the 5.5 or above the 7.5. Okay, so we need to give the drug alkalizer. We need to give the drug in such a way that uh, that, that will maintain the pH. That will maintain the pH and at that pH, at that pH, the growth of the E. coli should be growth of the E. coli should be reduced. Growth of the E. coli should be inhibited. And the antibacterial activity of the antibiotic should not be destroyed. Should not be destroyed. Should should remain should remain intact. Should remain intact. So the better the better pH uh, environment for that is the alkaline alkal, uh, alkaline environment. At alkaline environment, what will happen? The growth of the E. coli will be reduced. Growth of the E. coli will be inhibited and reduced. And the antibacterial activity of the antibi uh, antibiotic antibacterial activity of the antibiotic will remain. Intact will remain intact. Okay, so six to seven, six to seven. Okay, six to seven. Basically, that is that's a six to seven. So we need to give the alkalinization, alkalizers. So alkalinization of the urine should be done. That means the pH should be increased to the seven point five. Is achieved by administration of the half teaspoon of alkalizer. They are the sodium bicarbonate, sodium citrate, or the potassium citrate three to four times a day. Three to four times a day. So that is the reason for the alteration of the pH of the urine. Okay. Alkalination of the urine should be done to keep the pH at the level of the 7.5. Uh, 
by the administration of the half teaspoon of the sodium bicarbonate sodium citrate or the potassium citrate three to four times a day three to four times a day okay three to four times a day so why sh this should be done this should be done because to to inhibit the growth of the e coli and to intact the to maintain the to maintain the uh, antibacterial activity of the um, antibiotic intact that is the reason of the alteration of the ph of the ph second is the second is the second is the drink plenty of water drink plenty of water 2 to 3 liters per day drink plenty of water 2 to 3 liters per day 2 to 3 liters per day drink plenty of water 2 to 3 liters per day okay that is a uh, non pharmacological measure they are the form of so this are these are this is all about the uh, infection of the urinary tract infection oh, the, okay uh, bacterial infection okay some urinary antiseptics antiseptics are there urinary antiseptics are there so what are the urinary antiseptics okay urinary antiseptics are the drugs which act as a antibacterial agent only in the urinary tract or there is no or little systemic effect these are the urinary antiseptics are the drugs urinary antiseptics are the drugs that which act that that have got the antibacterial activity only in the urinary tract only in the urinary tract but they have little or no systemic effect okay so what are the urinary antiseptics they are the nitrofurantoin methanamine mandelate and the nalidixic acid nitrofurantoin methanamine mandelate and the nalidixic acid nalidixic acid they are the urinary antiseptics okay the important thing is that the, these are the and these are the urinary antiseptic they are the, and they have got the antibacterial activity they have got the antibacterial but they, that is only limited to the urinary tract there is a there is a little or no systemic antibacterial activity of the urinary antiseptic the drugs are the nitrofurantoin methanamine mandelate and the nalidixic acid and the nalidixic acid. okay now what the nitrofurantoin as a the nitrofurantoin as an antiseptic activity okay only one slide is there okay they achieve the higher urinary concentration but poor tissue level i mean that means to say that they have got their antibacterial activity limited to the urinary tract but not to the systemic activity but not the systemic activity they are administered orally they are administered orally and used for the treatment of the chronic suppressive therapy chronic suppressive therapy so what is the chronic suppressive therapy chronic suppressive therapy what is the chronic suppressive therapy the chronic suppressive therapy one ko se Uh, if during the recurrent urinary tract infection or when the during the chronic urinary tract infection that the urea will be there that the urea bane ko si presence of the presence of the presence of the bacteria presence of the bacteria in the urine is called the bacteria that could be the symptomatic or the asymptomatic that's called the bacteria to suppress the to suppress the bacteria to suppress the bacteria during the recurrent urinary tract infection and during the chronic urinary tract infection that is called the chronic suppressive therapy for that treatment is called the chronic suppressive therapy it is not recommended for the acute urinary tract infection it is not recommended for the acute urinary tract infection but the important thing is that this drug is safe during the pregnancy so if the urinary tract infection is common during the pregnancy if the urinary tract infection occurs during the pregnancy the drug of choice during the urinary tract infection is the, during the pregnancy is the nitrofurantoin other drugs they are basically contraindicated most of the drug they are basically contraindicated so important of the nitrofurantoin is that this drug can be used during the chronic suppressive therapy during the urinary tract infection that occurs during the pregnancy important thing is that should i should i repeat it again it's a important thing only the important thing is that i may ask you the multiple choice question which drug is used for the chronic suppressive therapy one of the one of the option will be the nitrofurantoin okay so so we have to choose the answer is the nitrofurantoin okay and this drug is used during the safe during the pregnancy this this drug is safe during the pregnancy okay nitrofurantoin uh, important thing about the I, i will repeat it again nitrofurantoin this drug is used for the treatment of the as a chronic suppressive therapy chronic suppressive therapy okay and this drug is drug is during the urinary tract infection during the pregnancy at least remember that at least remember that okay now <clears throat> last slide for today urinary analgesia urinary analgesia okay what is that urinary analgesia that relieves the pain that hap that occurs in the urinary tract in the urinary tract so what is the urinary what is the objective to relieve the pain at lower part of the urinary tract to relieve the pain at lower part of the urinary tract that is the bladder and the urethra okay so what are the drugs the drugs are the phenazopyridine 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 it's a azodai it's a azodai it's it's a azodai so what will happen when this drug is taken orally after taking orally what will happen this drug will be excreted by the kidney and kidney excreted by the kidney and from the kidney when the metabolites of the this drugs when they reaches to the lower part of the urinary tract they produce their local analgesic effect they produce their local analgesic effect okay 
So urinary analgesia, the drug has a phenazopyridine to relieve the pain at the lower part of the urinary tract, bladder and the urinary tract. So they act directly, directly on the urinary tract mucosa when excreted to the to produce the local analgesic effect. That is all about the renal stone. That is all about the renal stone. Okay. That's all for today. We have completed the drugs for the urinary tract infection. Okay. Uh, in coming slide, uh, the day after tomorrow, uh, anti-diarrheal, anti-diarrheal drug. Eh? So anti-diarrheal drug. So we will discuss about the anti-diarrheal drug. And uh, <clears throat> okay. Thank you for today.